What is up everyone? I am really excited about this. I took a heat transfer class and fell in love with it and so I wanted to make my own cooler. You can see this cool little gizmo out here and then I also have some added insulation inside. But uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the entire thing and stay tuned. So this is a really cool project that I've been working on. I've been sourcing out a lot of parts here. And I'm going to go ahead and give you like a little wiring diagram and kind of show all the different parts. So for me, if I'm not connected to a car battery, I'll be using this inverter. It's going to go from AC to uh, 12 volt DC. And then this is my thermostat. It is, it's got this little submergible thermostat right here. And then it's got the uh, power in and then the power out. And that's gonna be able to turn my whole system on and off uh, via like what temperature I set. And then coming here, I have, this is gonna be all inside the cooler. This radiator is gonna be full of freezing cold liquid with a fan blowing through it. And then the fan's just gonna be circulating the air through the cooler to keep the cooler completely cold. This pump is gonna circulate water through the radiator and through this heat exchanger. This heat exchanger is going to be attached to a Peltier device. Now a Peltier device has um, electricity going through it. One side gets super hot and one side gets super cold. We're going to take advantage of the super cold side and uh, we're just going to radiate out the uh, hot side with a CPU cooler. And so right now I had um, two Peltier devices, but I'm really gonna try to just use one of these. And so this Peltier device will, or sorry, this CPU cooler will be hanging out outside and um, just radiating out the heat from the uh, Peltier device. Overall, that is uh, basically it. So the most important thing about a Peltier device is it always will get hotter on the hot side than it will on the cool side. And that's just thermodynamics right there. And so basically, if you don't have enough heat dissipating on this side, the hot side, then it will go over to the cold side. You know, try it out yourself, but don't do it for too long because you'll actually burn this thing out. Um, you can do like a lower voltage, like a three volts or five volts or something. And you'll notice that this side will actually get uh, the cold side will actually get pretty hot. And so originally what I was gonna do is put also this piece on there and then have two of them and then place them on top of here like, like this and then have the CPU cooler on top of here. But what was happening is the aluminum was absorbing all the heat and this was taking a little bit of the heat but it wasn't taking enough and basically the aluminum piece was absorbing it and holding it there and not dissipating it quick enough which was making the cold side super hot so i had to take this aluminum piece off and as of right now i'm just going to do one single one and see how it goes because right now it's looking pretty good i've only had this on here for a few minutes and that's pure ice Now the next step is to get a giant sheet of foam board. No, I'm just kidding, but I'm uh, increasing the insulation on here. You can see this cooler, you know, it's okay, but I think it can do a lot better, and especially since I want it to be super high efficient. I got R7.5, and I'm just cutting it out, measuring it, and then cutting it out by hand. And it's gonna be a lot more efficient with some thicker foam in there as well to add on to the R value of whatever this is. So it's gonna be really nice. We got ourselves a brand new cooler here. If you pull it up, you got the lid, take the lid out, and wow, that's gonna be a lot better. All right, so now we kind of want to figure out how we want to mount it on the cooler. So this part we want to keep cold, and then this part needs to be outside to radiate the heat out. And you can see right here that there's these two arrows, 
and the airflow goes in this direction and out there. And so naturally air goes from cold to hot, so air convects up, and I want those arrows to be pointing in the up direction. So I'm gonna have my cooler oriented like so. And I think I want it on the side just because of all the mounting inside. I kind of want the fan and radiator to blow uh, long ways through the entire uh, cooler. And so uh, maybe something like so. I'm gonna drill two holes right here all the way through so I can have the hose going all the way through. And we'll mount this onto the outside of the cooler. Let me go ahead and use my Dremel tool and just Dremel that out. All right, everything's looking pretty good here. Holes fit really good. All right, so I got my hoses here. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the, the hoses on. Looking good. You can push it through. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mount this PC fan on here. Air flows in this direction. And so I'm gonna have it flowing like so. And voila. Also went ahead and took apart just a random cigarette lighter charger, USB charger. This is going from 12 volts to 5 volts, and this is what I need for my pump. And so this is your power coming in, so your 12 volts. Your ground is the same for both. And then the power that's coming through is one of these four. I'm going to check it out. All right, so you can hear the pump running. I've got the fan on, my converter. All of the fans are running, thermostats running, and thermoelectric cooler. I'm running at about 13.6 volts and running 4.3 amps. So it's pretty uh, fairly good draw. It's not bad for the competitors of these uh, bigger refrigerators they're about four draw amps so i think i'm right in that range which is really good i work super hard i'm trying to keep that draw very low now we just got to tidy everything up and we'll be set to go so i primed the system with this bowl of water i had the pump in there and then i had this part just draining the water in and when the when both of these parts were fully submerged this is loose right here I connected them and then now I just need to tighten this part and then the whole system will be closed. You can have like a little reservoir so you can fill it up and stuff like that. But personally, I don't want like a little reservoir. I want an entire closed system just because it's going to take a lot longer to cool the water if you have more water than less water, obviously. So I'm um, going to have this kind of system instead and we're going to tighten that up. Now, last but not least, we definitely want to have some sort of insulation because this is going to be cold. And if it's like 100 degrees out, we want this to be protected. So I got some really nice insulation and then I just cut out a little hole here. So it's just going to fit perfectly over this. So you can see it's nice and flush here. I have this really nice piece of insulation. The... Um, shiny part is actually going to reflect the heat away which will be really nice and then also you can see that there's a real thin piece of rubber there for some added insulation this is some really high quality stuff meant for uh, air conditioning units and like hvac and stuff like that All right, we're going to 
going from the 12 volt system all the way in. I just turned it on. Heat exchanger, thermoelectric device, and then the little cooler is in there where it's getting all the liquid cold. And we have the pump moving all the water through. Pumps moving the cold water into the radiator and then the fans blowing it through and circulating it all the way through. I also added some insulation here and all the way around just to increase the R value so this doesn't have to cool it on down as often or as hard, you know, it's definitely going to help out the entire system. Now there's a big issue with the thermoelectric cooler that we have not talked about yet. It's just a limitation in today's engineering. No matter what you do to make it as efficient as possible with insulation or fans, it's still limited. And what I'm trying to say here is if it's higher than 57 degrees outside, uh, the cooler can't stay cold enough to keep your food safe. If it's below 57 degrees outside, then you're fine. And so, with that being said, it only can do a certain temperature differential between the outside and inside temperature. It cannot cool off that thermoelectric cooler quick enough. The biggest thing I think I'm going to take from this is, you know, if I'm going camping or stuff like that, you know, for like three or four days, which I'm planning to actually use this, is I'm going to set my food in here and I'm going to put like a cold pack in it. And then the cold pack is gonna help supplement and get me down to that next 10 degrees down. But the cold pack also doesn't have to work as hard and it's not gonna melt as quickly because of this system. And also, when you open up your cooler all the time, you know, you're releasing all of the cold air. And so this is gonna help bring down your temperature a lot quicker than what just ice would do. And ice is gonna melt a lot quicker if, um, you know you don't have any sort of system like this so it's gonna kind of help uh, be a happy medium I'm not gonna have ice I'm just gonna have a little ice pack and I've tested it a couple times and it lasts two or three days with an ice pack and some food and you know I'm well below the safety point for a refrigerator you know if you are interested in working on a thermo cooler our thermoelectric cooler, I'd really recommend doing it. You know, that device in there is really neat. You know, there's no moving parts. It's just one piece. And hopefully they can get this technology up, you know, so this is actually something that can be used in the future because it's super light and simple. You know, I can't wait to see what the engineers are working on right now with this specific project with the thermoelectric coolers. So keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully the technology will improve in the years, which it will. And um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my cooler.